Greetings, I'm Rose. I like coffee and sewing. We're gonna change it up today. There's an energy drink in my coffee cup. You're going to experience some of my caffeinated excitement as we dig through some fabric and trims and the other supplies you'll need to create this 1970s prairie dress. I am wearing the True Bias Nico tank shirt. I don't know. I made the tank version. And I was going to just cut out all of my fabric and show you how to assemble the bodice piece today, but I thought we could play around with some of the trims and some of the fabric in my stash. Now, I am very fortunate. Um, my grandmother lived in the same house for 30 to 40 years um, and was a collector. When she passed about five years ago, I inherited the majority of her supplies. These are, are probably not uh, readily available. Um, you can try secondhand seller. There is also um, backroom finds. I recently discovered her. She's got a YouTube channel called Stephanie Canada and she has just listed some trims from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So some of those trims on her shop would work great for this dress. And what's great about this dress is that you can use kind of the smaller pieces of trim. So maybe the things that are less than a yard that you held onto but you didn't really know what to do with, they'd be great for maybe highlighting the waist or the seams or the straps on this dress. As I looked through my stash, I thought I could kind of go over some of these fabrics I inherited from my grandmother and some of these trims I inherited from my grandmother. And if I wanted, you know, 10 or 15 gunny sacks dresses, what I would use these trims and fabrics for, and the different details I might highlight. We're going to still leverage the base pattern I drafted with you in our last video, but I'll also talk about how you can maybe make further alterations to that base pattern to highlight some of these trims and fabric we'll be going over. So get your caffeine and let's get started. I have pulled different fabrics from my stash, some of them vintage, some of them new. If you've seen my haul video, you'll see this kind of tealish green. I bought it to make a vest on a home deck fabric, but this would work great for, um, you know, this tapestry section. And if you look at any of the gunny sacks dresses or other prairie dresses, sometimes the entire bodice is made out of cotton velveteen, which has a very similar texture to this green. Another option, and this is vintage. This came from grandma. Um, and this is a narrow whale corduroy, and this would work too. Again, watch out for the nap and the grain lines, and you wanna make sure that, especially with these smaller pieces, it can be confusing, and you can have the fabric facing the wrong way, and then you've got the nap discoloration. Ask me how I know. So I would use this, you know, again, for just this piece, or the entire bodice, or just a waistline, or just the straps. You've got a lot of options here. I can't help myself. I always buy fabric, even though I don't need it. Oh my God, I do not need more fabric. Um, but I loved this color and I thought this would make a great contrast for the bodice. And I have another option here too. Um, I roll all my fabric. Uh, this is a, um, a dark, like a navy uh, coating. If you look at the bodices of the prairie dresses and some of the gunny sacks, they've got some kind of texture. Um, so I'm focusing more on kind of the velveteen, the, um, you know, the plush texture. So that's why I pulled this coating. And this is just some um, crinkle rayon. Um, this I bought secondhand. And this could work for the bodice. And then you can also use this for some of the tiers and the skirt. Um, it's fairly lightweight, so if you do want to use it for the bodice, I would recommend interfacing it. So that's what I have for some main fabric, and I thought I could pull some of the coordinating fabric I have from my stash and just show you how you can use these fabrics. So let's go back to this crinkle rayon. Let's say I want to use that for my bodice piece or just for the entire bodice. I have this. This is vintage. Uh, I think it was originally supposed to be curtains. Because the skirt is gathered and we have those smaller pieces, you can use these cutoffs. I love that. And then we have all of these colors in here that you can pick up using trends. So the wool coating. Now, um, this is again, um, it either came from my grandma's stash or secondhand. How beautiful is this border print? It is so 70s. Um, I'm sure it's a poly blend. Uh, it's got a border print on one side, but if I use this wool coating, I can have this on the bottom. This is another smaller piece from Grandma's stash. 
this would work great. Uh, it's got the orange colors I love and some of the muted mustards. And this, if you look at gunny sacks and prairie dresses, this is just like perfect on palette for those. Um, it's a little bit lighter. Maybe I would want to use it for a summer dress, um, but the one I'm making is going to be kind of a more autumnal with um, the richer, darker tones. So this is a, um, a rayon crepe that I probably bought secondhand. This is a smaller scale than the polka dot I used, but there are some versions of gunny sacks dresses and other prairie dresses where they have small scale fabrics together. So I'm coordinating this smaller polka dot with, I'll get a close up of this. These two fabrics would work really well together. This orange corduroy, and we have this vintage green. You see how it just pops next to that corduroy? Oh, it's beautiful. I love this. There isn't that much of this fabric available, but that's one of the things that I love about this dress style is that we can use these smaller pieces. So I did try to utilize fabrics in my stash for the majority of the next version. And the fabric I found in my stash I absolutely love is part of that fabric that I inherited from my grandmother is this. I am a sucker. I am a sucker for mustard. The color, not the food. This color, it's beautiful. I love that dark rose and I'm not a huge purple fan, but I love that lighter purple that's on here. And this is the kind of the fabric that drove the rest of my color combinations. So we have this dark rose corduroy that I inherited from my grandmother as well. See how well that goes together? And then, believe it or not, with the amount of fabric I have, I did not have a smaller coordinating fabric that I could use for the exposed facings and the waistband. And um, I found this, and it is a, a darker mustard, almost like a tobacco color with cream hash marks. So it's similar in size um, to the, the black and white polka dot I use here but I thought it would really coordinate well. And then you've got some cream undertones in this mustard floral that are picked up here. And then um, I just thought that looked so good together. I inherited a lot of things from my grandmother, including a box of great vintage trims. And one of those is this from the 70s, perfect gunny sacks. And I wanted to find a way to use this, um, especially with like the, the purple, and the flowers here, but I think it might be a little much, so I'm not sure if I'm going to use this, but I absolutely love this trim. Another option is this crocheted lace. See how it picks up those hash marks really well? Now I can use that on maybe the straps or to highlight the opening here instead of the ribbon or the waistband. Check out Instagram or Pinterest and look up at vintage gunny sacks dresses or vintage prairie dresses and you'll see creative uses for these laces throughout the dress. Now I don't quite have enough of this. If I had more I would probably use it um, but this is a I'm not sure if it was a piece of bedding or if it was meant for lingerie but this would work great for an inset. I could use this here but this is going to be probably um, a summer version, maybe using that, um, you know, that mustard brown floral. And this would look beautiful if I used it as part of the bodice when using that fabric for a summer version. This is another option. So this is eyelet lace. So you, it's designed to thread ribbon through and you can use that as highlighting the waist again or those details or um, I've doubled the size of my straps here if you halved the size if you um, use the pattern as designed instead of doubling it that would work perfect in the straps and you could if you've got a um, you know like a grow grain or a denser ribbon that can support the weight you could probably just use this as your straps this is a a home deck ribbon corded trim Make sure it hand washes and hang dries so it doesn't shrink. But this has some of that texture that I love in these fabrics. And you could use this just like how I've used the ribbon. You can use it around the waistband. 
It's just a beautiful detail. On this one, I have used rat tail. Um, I'm not sure if it's called something else, but I've used rat tail as my lacing. This is the trim that I'm using to lace the rat tail. The gunny sacks and prairie dresses, they use something like this, but more frequently, I see like a denser crocheted lace as the loops for this. Authentic like gunny sacks and prairie dresses, they didn't use this poly rat tail. A cotton braided cording is usually used. And this dress is really an inspired buy. It is not meant to be a one-to-one -one recreation. There are details I've added here that aren't always in gunny sacks dresses. Um, you know, the waistband going all the way around with the details. I want to honor the true vintage and I don't want to take away from the beauty of those dresses. And if you can find true vintage that fits you, support those vintage sellers, buy them. The original dresses are beautiful. They're stunning. Um, but again, like I had said, I can't fit into true vintage. Gunny sex dress, they just didn't make them in my size. And this is kind of a nice alternative. Find what inspires you and go with it. You've got a lot of options here, especially with, you know, that base pattern that we went over. And a detail on here, let me unlace this so you can see. I added a panel here just to kind of hide my bra strap if I wear a bra with this. This is just a thicker width of double fold bias tape. It's a little bit high. I've got it kind of poking up a half inch from the top. I would bring it down next time probably to an inch because it does kind of show up as the bodice splits apart. So let's go over the, the trims I've used for this and the trims I'm going to be using on my dress. So I used rat tail. I used this braided cording. I used ribbon from grandma's stash. I used quilting cotton tapestry home deck fabric and more quilting cotton. The dress I am going to create will be using vintage dark rose corduroy, vintage quilting cotton, and new quilting cotton as accent pieces. Now the trims I'm going to be using. This is a darker cream rat tail. I'll be using that as my front lacing. I didn't have coordinating trim or ribbon that I could use to highlight all of these edges. So from Joann's, I bought this light purple, the same color as the roses that I will be using to highlight my seams. And this is 3 8 of an inch. The ribbon I inherited from my grandmother, I think is a half to 5 8 of an inch. You will also need a zipper. I used a nine inch zipper on this version. It's a little too short. So I'm going to try a 14 inch zipper and then I know that I can pull it up instead of having to pull it over my head. There's a hook and eye back here and there is some interfacing in the waistband. We have the lining. I used acetate lining that I inherited from my grandmother, uh, but the next version is going to be a tan poly satin. So the ribbon and the trim is stitched down on top You'll need a coordinating thread to top stitch your ribbon if you decide to do the detailing similar to mine. So yardage amounts. I would use a half yard of the contrasting tapestry fabric. Just be on the safe side, especially because if you're using something like this, it will have nap and that will change your cutting layout. Uh, two yards of this contrast because it's used in the straps, on the facing, down the front, the waistband, the back tie, and contrasting on the tiers. And then for the floral striped, I ordered three and a half yards and I was just barely enough because of how gathered it is and because how long it is. If you're wanting to make a shorter version, you can probably get away with two and a half to three yards. I always um, kind of err on the side of caution and buy more than I need. I don't know how many yards of this ribbon trim I used because it came on a spool that I inherited from my grandmother and I didn't measure. I bought three spools of three yards. So I have nine yards of ribbon to highlight the facing, the waistband, um, and the bottom tier. I bought two yards of this rat tail. I hope you enjoyed looking at the trims and the fabrics I inherited from my grandmother. This is a small portion of that stash. If you're interested in seeing more, let me know in the comments. So our next video is going to be cutting out the fabric and the supplies and stitching up the bodice. Thanks again for joining me. Hope to see you soon.